During the annual shareholders meeting, Elon Musk mentioned how at Tesla they completely redesigned the entire autopilot software stack and all the labeling software as well. The new system can now label all the images coming from all the cameras and how the images change over time. There is a lot of machine learning in this simple sentence and there is a lot of semiconductors innovation in the new system. The most recent proofs come from a patent application filed by Tesla a few weeks before the shareholders meet in 2020 and from two events that we at Expo Vista TV participated recently. So let's put all of this together. From last year Autonomy Day, we know that Tesla cars relies on multiple visual and non-visual sensors, like cameras, radar, ultrasonic sensors, and many more. These sensors can be distributed in different configurations, for example in the vehicle control module, or inside or outside the vehicle, like in neighboring vehicles or in the outside environment. All of these sensors generate a huge amount of data, that can only be processed with very powerful microchips and capable of executing very specific tasks. And this is also the reason why, for companies like Tesla, it is more convenient to produce a chip in-house, from the scratch. What they are doing at Tesla, is providing a solution to the challenge that semiconductor manufacturers are facing too. The need is not just for Tesla, but for many companies in the digital domain. Tesla happens to be the most innovative. The blueprint for this innovation is included in a patent application that was filed in August 2020. It is described as the application for a patent about a system capable of estimating the object properties using visual image data. When we talk about huge amount of data, images are at the top of the type of information that require the most resources. The patent describes all the possible configurations of the sensors, the type of data that are processed and the type of output. The output can be 3D images, map data, objects, properties or information about how these data are processed. The main tool or invention as it is mentioned in the patent is the application of machine learning. Machine learning needs to process huge amount of data very fast, much faster than traditional CPUs can handle. For these reasons, new applications require a new chip design. Though patent applications are not the most fun documents to read, we found this interesting for two reasons. First, the document shows the complexity and the incredible speed at which data are processed in the autonomous vehicles. And secondly, because only a month before the patent was published, Expo Vista TV participated to two leading events in the semiconductors industry, Semicon 2020 and the Design Automation Conference, or DAC 2020. Most of the terms in the Tesla patents were also mentioned at both events. The keynote speakers in particular, talked about the current trends, and most of them started by acknowledging the end of the Moore's Law, and presented the challenges ahead. These challenges include the complexity of fusing the data coming from different sources. Data fusion is a key element of electronic design architecture, and it is exactly what the Tesla patent is addressing. The patent can be found at the link below, but the document will sound more interesting if put in the general context of innovations in chip design. For this reason, we include a segment for one of the presentations of Semicon 2020. Synopsys is a global leader in electronic design automation, or EDA. The company's CEO, Art DeGeos, gave the best presentation about the essence of modern chip design and the development ahead that will create even more opportunities opportunities for the semiconductor industry and for Tesla to further improve its chip architecture and introduce even more advanced features. Let's take a listen. And so in the automation field, electronic design automation, a lot of advances have happened. Let me give you sort of the 15 seconds uh, overview what EDA is. It all builds on the same thing, which is can you capture the essence of physics can you model it? If you can model it, can you simulate it? If you can simulate it, can you analyze? If you can analyze, can you optimize? And if you can optimize, can you automate? Oh, and by the way, a great piece of automation is, why don't you reuse stuff that's already designed? IP reuse is a really great shortcut. And so if we look at those things, we can see that fundamentally there's sort of two major task sets the modeling and prototyping, and prototyping allows you to play with the model to see how something will behave even before you've built it. And then ultimately the desire to automate much of the process as things get built. Well, astoundingly, 
This way, which is an optimization path, also can be applied using AI and machine learning. And it's in a very similar fashion. You have to collect, in this case, a lot of big data. You create a model, typically neural networks. You learn from those. You interpret uh, the results. And then maybe you can automate some limited actions or have all the way autonomous behavior guided by an AI system. So what is fusion? Well, if you look at each one of those programs, they're actually made up of many hundreds of algorithms, symbolized here with these uh, hexagons. And what if we actually were able to look at a few programs and literally fuse them, see what commonalities exist? How can we drive those in the same direction and actually get the benefit of fusion? Well, let's see if we can do that. And the yes if in this case was applied to the two most fundamental programs on this pathway, the synthesis and the place and route. Synthesis takes functionality and converts it into structure. Place and route takes the structure and converts it into a physical flat layout. So you merge these two and we did get fusion. This was hard to do, but I can tell you the results were fabulous. Nine months into it now, I can tell you, you get about the results in about half the time, two eggs faster. And you say, yeah, but you probably don't get as good results. No, you do get good results. You actually get better results, better performance, lower power, smaller area. But this time, there is an additional need. And the need is so big that AI computation wants massive data. And therefore, we now see for the first time people designing multiple chiplets and not just putting them in a package, but actually putting them on another chip to bring them real close together. Well, what if around fusion, we now wrap some cloud computation so you could have burst computation and we make this governed by the smarts of machine learning? That's quite a combo. You know, typically this process takes multiple months of a fairly large team to do this. And now, literally, we can translate these months into a few weeks. And I think that has enormous impact for the future. And I'm, I'm super uh, excited about con uh, moving this forward because there's so many more things that we can do here.